Next up, another extension of lines into three dimensions could be a plane. Now, a plane would be something two-dimensional, very much like a sheet of paper or something along those lines. Now, let's assume for a moment that you do have a plane. Planes are usually defined in terms of two directions that lie within the plane together, and it doesn't matter what two direction vectors you happen to have. Now, we are going to define a new thing. It's referred to as the normal vector. A normal vector for a given plane would be the vector that is orthogonal to every other vector within the plane. So if we do have a point, then a normal vector would be something that is orthogonal to every vector that lies within the plane. So for this piece of paper that I'm working on right now, a normal vector would be something coming out of the paper and directly toward, um, where's, where's the camera lens? Toward you. There we go. So, yeah, something along those lines. Now, given that, we started with two vectors within the plane. We're looking for something that is orthogonal to both. We're going to see some cross products show up from time to time with this. So first off, let's assume that the normal vector takes on the following form. We'll let it have components of A, B, and C. And we'll define a point within the plane as well. We'll use the same naming convention that we used for the line. The point will be x0, y0, z0, and the normal vector will be uh, a, b, c. So we'll assume for a moment that this point right here is x0, y0, z0, and that any other point within the plane is simply going to be x, y, z. Now that means that if I were to connect initial point to any other point within the plane, I would be able to create a vector within the plane. Well, the normal vector is defined as orthogonal to every vector within the plane. Therefore, if I were to take the normal vector and dot it with this vector that I just created, let's see, how would that go? Uh, we'll do terminal minus initial, so x minus x naught, y minus y naught, and z minus z naught. Uh, I know that because they're orthogonal to each other that the dot product of those two vectors is guaranteed to be zero. Now more specifically, if I were to actually take these three components and multiply them by these corresponding components, I would get the following. This is a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught that all is equal to zero. What you're looking at here is referred to as the standard form for a plane. Standard form for a plane lets you know immediately what is the normal vector to the plane in the form of the coefficients a, b, and c, and it immediately lets you know a point within the plane in the form of x0, y0, and z0. Now, what is typical to do when it comes to these planes is to distribute the A, distribute the B, distribute the C, and then combine all of the like terms that you have. In the event that you do that, A is still the coefficient of X, B is still the coefficient of Y, C is still the coefficient of Z, but then you can take all of these other constants that are in here and combine them all together. This is referred to as the general form of a plane. Oh, general form. should probably say that, or write down that thing that I just said. So yeah, general form of a plane. So the idea is, regardless of the information that's given to you in the problem, you want to turn that into a normal vector and at least one point within the plane. Now, I did mention that if you are given vectors within the plane, a cross product could be necessary. If you're given points within the plane, you'll probably need to turn those points into vectors take a cross product to get the normal vector, and then you've got a normal vector and a point. So ultimate goal is to turn given information into a point and a normal vector. Essentially, the same thing is true for lines as well, except instead of a normal vector, we are going to be going for a direction vector. So let's take a look at some examples.